Hello friends, in this video we're going to implement jump buffering into our player controller. So first of all, let me explain what this is and then we're going to implement it. Okay, let's say that the character right here is falling to the ground and the player wants to jump. So they press the spacebar right before the character right here touches the floor. Let's say right here. Currently this jump is not going to get registered because the player isn't touching the floor. And that's the check we make before we jump. So if we take a look at the player script, when the player touches the jump key or presses the jump key, we check if we are on the floor. And if you're not, then we're not going to jump. So in this scenario, the player or the character is simply going to land on the floor and not jump. And from the player's perspective, that's going to feel bad. And that's because the time frame that they miss the jump is so small that they're not really going to be able to see it. They're going to think that they press the space bar, but the, you know, the game didn't work, the player didn't jump. It's overall not going to feel good and it's going to frustrate the player. So in order to fix this, we need to make the game a little bit more forgiving in this regard. So that's where jump buffering comes in. So when the player, you know, tries to jump while in air, we're going to save that jump and once they you know, once the character touches the floor, we're going to jump. So that's what jump buffering is basically. Now let's go ahead and start implementing this. We're going to go into the player scene here and create a timer. We're going to call this timer, let's see, the jump buffer timer. The jump buffer time is also going to be very short, just like the coyote time. In the end, it's going to be 0.1 seconds, but just for testing purposes, to make testing a little bit easier, I'm going to put this at 0.3 seconds. We'll change this at the end. And this is also going to be one shot. Let's go into the script. Let's create a reference to this timer. Jump buffer timer. Kind of a long name, jump buffer timer, just like that. And I'm also going to connect, let's see, I forgot to put the assignment operator there. I'm also gonna connect the signal, the timeout signal. Let's take that function and we'll place it below the coyote timers timeout function, just like that. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to save that buffer jump when the player tries to jump while in air. Okay, so in order to save that, we're going to create a Boolean variable. I'm going to call this jump buffered. It will be false at the start. And we're going to set this to true if the player tries to jump, but the jump doesn't work. So right here, we're making the player jump, but let's create an if else statement here. So in the case that the jump didn't work, and that's going to be because the player is not on the floor, in that case, we're going to say jump buffered equals true if it is false. So we're going to say if not jump buffered. So if it is false, let's say jump buffered equals true. We can also print something and say jump buffered true. Oops. And of course, we're going to start the jump buffer timer as well. And then once the timer times out, we're going to set jump buffered back to false. Right here. And in here, we can also print jump buffered false. Okay, so let's test this. Now we should be able to try to jump while we're in the air, that's going to trigger the jump buffer timer. And then once the timer times out, we're going to set the, let's see, let's say false. We're going to set jump buffer back to false. Okay. So I'm gonna try to jump while I'm in the air. And as you can see, that triggers the jump buffer timer. And it doesn't work if I just do a normal jump after landing, as you can see. Okay, great. So 
now that we're saving, you know, the fact that we have a buffer jump, we need to actually, you know, make the player jump once they land on the ground. So we need to be able to detect the, the frame, the moment in the game that the player touches the ground. So before we call move and slide, the player should be here. And after we call move and slide, the player should be touching the, the, the floor or the box or whatever. So that's the moment in the game that we're trying to detect. And we can easily do that after we call move and slide using the was on floor variable here. So let's think about this. If we weren't on the floor before moving and after moving, we are on the floor. That is the exact you know, moment in the game we're looking for. So we can simply say if we weren't on the floor. So if not was on floor and if is on floor, so if is on floor returns true after moving, that means we just touched the ground. So we can test this by printing touched ground. And now once the player lands, we should print touched ground. As you can see, that is perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now inside of this if statement, we're going to make the player jump if there is a buffered jump. Before I do that though, I'm going to create a couple of comments here. Let's say touched ground for this. And for this one up here, this is started to fall. Okay. So in here, we're going to check if jump buffered is true. And if so, we're going to set it to be false because we're going to use the buffered jump then we're going to print buffered jump just so we can see it. And then finally, we need to make the player jump. Currently, the code that makes the player jump is up here. We want to use this again. So because of that, I'm actually going to turn this into a function. So let's cut all of this code from here, create a function called jump, place it here. Fix the indentation just like that. I'm also going to get rid of these prints jump buffer true and jump buffer false. We don't need them anymore. And in here, we're going to say jump again. And this time, this part of the if statement is going to get called and the player is going to jump again after they touch the floor. Okay. Let's give this a shot. I'm going to try to jump while I'm falling to the ground. And as you can see, it's working. If I land and jump again, it doesn't work. That's a normal jump. But if I try to jump while I'm in the air, it's going to say buffer jump, which is exactly what we're looking for. But of course, there's a time frame for this. For example, if I press the space bar early before the 0.3 seconds that we have currently, it's not going to work. As you can see, I press jump while I'm here. And when I fall, it doesn't work because the timer has timed out. Okay. So now that this is working, let's put the wait time of this to be 0.1 because 0.3 is just too much. And it's going to feel weird, but 0.1 is going to be the sweet spot. So now if I try to jump right before I touch the ground, the jump is still going to count. And you can test this first without jump buffering and after with jump buffering, and you're going to see a very big difference. This is going to make the game feel a lot better, I promise. It's such a bad feeling when you, you know, try to jump and it doesn't work and you just land flat and then you have to, you know, press the space bar again. It just makes the game feel really bad, but this really fixes it. And yeah, that's going to be how to implement jump buffering. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.